G'day everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to this episode. Now this episode came about um, after a, a number of questions about a similar uh, topic. So uh, I, I thought I'd create this because it's obviously um, the need is there um, and it's all around being notified when forms have been submitted. So we're going to go through a scenario here. We're going to use Microsoft Forms. We're going to embed that onto a SharePoint site. We're going to use some out of the box notification settings, but then we're also going to take it a little bit of a step further and use Power Automate to notify uh, our team. So we're going to build a, a little tiny form uh, for this scenario, and it's going to be just an IT request form. So you can see here I've got a site set up and I'm just going to use Microsoft Forms. So I'm just going to jump in um, to the 365 Start page. I've clicked on Forms. Let's now create a new form. So nice and simple. Let's just call it IT Request. Um, please complete this form for assistance. And let's just add a couple of different fields here. Um, type of issue. Let's go uh, SharePoint, let's go OneDrive, let's go Microsoft Teams, let's go OneNote. That'll do us. Then we're going to add another field and we're going to keep this as a long answer. Uh, please provide a detailed um, description of the issue and that'll do us, okay? All right, simple form. Let's now have a look at how we embed that onto our SharePoint page. So I'm just gonna jump back into the IT site. I'm gonna edit this page and out of the box, as you probably already know, we've got a Microsoft Forms web part. So we can add that to a page, but we can use an existing form. But what it's gonna ask for is the, the Forms web address. So let's just jump back onto the form here. I'm gonna hit the share button, I'm gonna copy the web address, and I'm now gonna paste that into this box here. And I'm gonna leave collect responses on. I'm gonna choose okay, and we are now good to go. Publish the page, we've got a now a form that's embedded onto the page. Now what I wanna do now is I wanna just jump back into Microsoft Forms, because there's an option under settings here that I can tick to allow me to get an email notification every time a form uh, is submitted. So I'm gonna tick that box. You can see there it's saving, so it automatically saves for me. And let's now fill that form out as another user. So I've got a, another user that's logged in to the site over here. And I can see here that I've got the form. Let's go and fill that out. Let's just go OneDrive with a typical response here of, not syncing, and let's submit that. So the form's now been submitted. Let's now just drag that back across and we'll jump into Alex's uh, Alex's window here. Let's jump into his inbox and you can see here that he automatically gets notified that there's been a response. And we've got a link to the, the results, so I can click on the results here and I can go to the response and see that result, okay? so. That's a, a nice, simple, out of the box way that we can go about um, getting notified of any responses that have been submitted to the form. Now, if we've got, in this scenario, we might have a group of people. So there might be three or four or five of us as part of this team, and we all wanna get notified when somebody um, responds to that. Now, we've got a, we're using Microsoft Teams uh, in this organization, in this scenario. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna post a message to a channel. So every time a form is submitted on this uh, through this form, we're gonna post a, a message to a channel. So to do that, what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to use Power Automate. So I'm gonna jump up to here uh, to the waffle. I'm going to go to all apps and I'm going to find Power Automate, which is there. And let's go through and create a flow or a, a Power Automate flow. And we're gonna read the information of the form and then we're going to post it. So there's a number of different templates that are pre-configured for you. One of them is actually for, for Microsoft Forms and there's a stack of these, but there's already one there that relates to, uh, relates to Teams. So let's just 
we'll go through this. First time I've used it in this tenant. And let's have a look at the templates that are provided for us. So you can see here, there's a, a lot that relate to Microsoft Forms. And the one that I'm looking for is this one here. So there's a notify the team when a new response is submitted, all right? So let's use this and let's complete, basically fill in the gaps. So it's already gonna connect to Teams and to Forms for me. It's gonna use my account and it's gonna authenticate me to those services. So once that's now connected, we're gonna be taken to, um, to the user interface where we can just basically select our form. So the form that we needed this flow to respond to is the IT request form. And the form ID down here, we're gonna get the response details from this form. And it's gonna loop through these and we're going to post the message into a team. So we need to be able to select the team here. Now I'm just gonna choose the project team and we're going to now choose a channel. It's gonna automatically detect the channels of this team and for this example, we're just gonna choose the general channel. And let's now craft the message. So what we can do here is create the, the, the post, all right? A new um, for, uh, form has been filled out. Details are below. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add in some dynamic content. So we're gonna have the type of issue. We're then going to have the description. We're then going to have the responder's email. Now we can craft this out a little bit more if we wanted to make it, um, you know, make it more uh, more intuitive and, and some more content around that if we wanted to. If the form was more detailed, then we could also then, um, uh, add all the, all the other responses in there as well, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to save this flow and we're gonna give this a test. So I'm gonna jump over to Megan's window here and let's now submit another response. How do I create a channel? And let's now submit that. So let's have a look at this flow and see if it's actually gonna be working for us, all right? So I'm just gonna jump back to here. We'll have a look at the settings and we'll see here that it's it's succeeded. Now what I wanna do is I wanna jump into Teams. You can see here that we're gonna open up Teams. I should have also hopefully got a new response, which I have. There's the response. But let's now jump into Teams and we'll jump into the Mark 8 project team and let's jump into the general channel. And you can see here that I've got the post that has been now posted to the actual channel of that team. So that will then notify and make that available to the rest of my team, okay? Okay, so let's now spruce things up a bit. Let's make things uh, uh, look a little bit nicer when we're posting it into Teams rather than just a text-based uh, post. What we're gonna use is an adaptive card. Now, it's gonna be a really, really basic adaptive card just to give you an idea of what we can do. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is, I'm just gonna drag this across here, is I've just changed our flow a little bit. So what you can see here is I've removed the default uh, post message uh, action here. And what I've done is I've added a, a, a new action here, the post your own adaptive card as, a, as the flow bot to a, a channel. Now, what we can see here is same thing. We can go ahead and choose a team. We can choose a channel, but then we've got the the, the JSON uh, payload here that we can put in the message body and it's gonna allow us to post what's called an adaptive card, okay? So to, to build out this adaptive card, there's a great resource, um, uh, an adaptive card designer that you can look at uh, adaptivecards.io forward slash uh, design up where we can design our card. Now you can see on the screen here, I've just gone ahead and what I've done is I've created a new card. 
So let me just go through this. I've created a new card. I've gone to a blank card and then I've just put in a couple of fields. Okay. So let's now, I'll go through that process now. So what I'm going to do, I'll add a new text block here. Uh, let's give this a name, the text here. So we know what it's actually going to be doing. So I'm just going to title this. I'm just going to say a uh, new IT request form submitted. So we're going to make that the title of the card. Now what we can do here is we can click on this and in the, on the right hand side here, we can make, have some styling. So let's go for large. Uh, we'll make it bold. Um, and the color will just make it, uh, an attention. All right. So we'll make it a different color. So you can see here, We've got some different colors that we can we can change. Good green warning will be yellow, and we'll go attention is red. So let's let's leave it at attention. The next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to put in another text block under here, and this is where we're going to uh, have the type of issue. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the text to type, and. I'll put a colon there. I'll select this. We'll make this one bold as well. Uh, and then on the next line, what we're going to do is we'll put a rich text block underneath this one. And this one here is we're going to put the, the contents of uh, the, the type. So let's just put in type contents and we're going to replace this. Okay. Next up, we're going to do another text block. And we'll, again, let's make this bold uh, size. We'll leave the size there. We'll, we'll make it bolder. And we'll make this one for the description. So we'll go issue description. And we'll put a colon here. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a rich, another rich text box under here. And let's go to replace with description. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually just copy this. So I'm just going to control A, I'm going to copy. I'm just going to bring across the flow editor now, and I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And I'm now going to paste that, uh, that JSON in. Now I'm going to change the channel here. I'm going to pop it in the general channel. And what we're going to go, come down here is we're going to come to these sections here where we're going to replace some text. So this one here is the type. So let's put in, in the dynamic content from our, um, from our form type of issue. And down here where we're going to replace it, we're just going to replace it with the image, the, the description. All right. So the detailed description there. Now let's save that flow and I'm just going to do a test. I'll run a test here on one of the other flows that I've already done. So let's test that now and I'll just drag this across. Let's jump into teams. We'll jump into the general channel, which I'm already in. And you can see here that I've now got a nice looking card instead of just some text. All right. So visually more appealing to us. All right, so just a little bit of an enhancement there. Obviously with adaptive cards, we can make things, uh, we can go even further uh, with our styling and with the type of card that we get. But the good thing about this is now, we can, as a team, we can now communicate, we can chat, we can discuss these issues in this, uh, around this particular issue uh, in this channel, all right? So using adaptive cards, nice and easy with that designer. We can design a card that we like, uh, and then we can test, we can first of all test that out and then we can just paste that into the, the message uh, body of the flow or the Power Automate flow and then that's going to then post that as an adaptive card to the channel, all right? So there we have it, nice, quick, easy way for us to create a Microsoft form, f uh, allow users to fill that form out. There's a couple of ways that we can get notified, either just by a simple email notification or we can take it a step further and introduce Power Automate, uh, and then we can go uh, and use our adaptive cards to be able to make it and post uh, a card to a particular channel. So I hope that brings you some value in this episode. Uh, stay tuned for uh, another episode. Um, now, if you haven't already 
uh, had a look at uh, the academy that I've built over at clouddrivenbusinessacademy.com. Head over there. There's a, a number of free masterclasses and courses that are available to you. So I encourage you to head over there and enroll. You've got lifetime access uh, and I will see you in the next episode.